Good morning, I'm Christian Ramos, reporter for Inquirer.net. Joining me is our house reporter, Neil Arwin Mercado, and you're watching Inside Look. In today's episode, we have Senate President Vicente Soto III and Senator Pan Filalaxon. Sirs, good morning. How are you, Paul? Good morning, good morning sir. Uh, and good morning, Neil. Mm -hmm. Good morning, partner. Good morning, uh, Christian, Neil, uh, partner, Senator Laxon. Uh, good morning at sa inyo po lahat. Uh, so let's dive in upon. I'm, I'm just going to start off with the 2022 national budget since the House has already started deliberating on it. Um, in the Senate, what's the timeline po? And kaya po ba itong ipasa this year on time? Mapapasa po ba itong national budget? Well, um, if I may answer that question, uh, we expect the budget to be submitted by the House of Representatives to us, or to, yeah, transmitted by the 1st of October. Uh, more or less, the last time Speaker Velasco and I talked, uh, he mentioned something to that effect. Okay. Nila <clears throat> before October 1. Um, tama -tama yon, uh, we will be on break by that time mm -hmm. because of the filing of the certificates of candidacy. But um, we were not prevented from conducting hearings and the, the different uh, committees handling or under the, the Committee on Finance handling the budget will be taking it up, I'm sure. So the timetable would be uh, hopefully by November, okay. we will be able to report it out on the floor for plenary and um, barring unforeseen, unforeseen circumstances, um, by the first or second week of December, we might be able to finish it then and hopefully before the Christmas break, pati na yung ratification of any BICAM uh, re uh, reports. Mm -hmm. Seriously, if I may um, add, if I may add uh, we, we don't have to wait for the House to transmit to the Senate mm -hmm. yung House version, yung tinatawag na GAB or Yellow Appropriations Bill, ano, yung House version. Uh, that said, September 8, may schedule na kami do sa tinatawag na general principles. So, sasabayan na namin sila sa committee hearings, but we cannot uh, tackle the measure on the floor unless the House transmits their version to the Senate. So, kasi kung hihintay pa namin yung matransmit sa October, or even uh, baka abuti na November, magagawal kami sa oras. So, as, uh, as a matter of practice, ginagawa namin, sumasabay na kami ng committee hearings and we're not violating anything. Um, sir, recently nga may mga nilabas na audit reports. Itong Commission on Audit uh, where it found some deficiencies in the spending of several agencies. Meron silang recommendations. Ano-ano yung mga agencies that the Senate um, will really scrutinize, will really focus in and uh, look at pagdating nitong um, GAB sa Senado? Um, Senator Lakson, uh, yes. uh, actually, lahat, uh, ano? Vice Chairman. Yes, actually, lahat. Uh, hindi naman pinapalapas lahat ng agencies kasi trabaho ng Kongreso ito at trabaho ng Senado na scrutinize ang lahat ng budget ng lahat ng agencies, not only the departments. Uh, pero meron siyempre mga ahensya na mas pagtutuunan ng pansin because of controversies. Example, DOH and of course, traditionally, DPWH, DepEd, uh, DOTR. Marami. Ang sabi ko, and of course, yung pinag-iinitan ng, uh, hindi yung pinag pero maraming issues na dapat harapin din, yung uh, pondo ng NTF LCAP. Ano? Ako, I'm no longer vice chairperson. I, uh, I asked the permission of the Senate President and, the, and my colleagues na i-take out na ako as vice chairman uh, uh, defending uh, several agencies. And uh, as you know by now, si Senator Bato yung uh, nagmana ng uh, uh, bilang vice chairperson at mag-defend uh, o mag-sponsor ng mga budget ng mga ahensyang dati kong hinahawakan. Um, gaano, sir, you mentioned NTFL. Kak, I would like to go uh, to that quickly, sir. Gaano kalaki yung possibility of defunding it? Should um, misspending really be... May, may makita tayong misspending sa funds, funds nila uh, so previous years, sir, is it a possibility? Because several lawmakers have already called for it. Yes, that's a possibility. Kasi kung hindi lang ma-explain how they spent yung uh, 16.4 billion na nakalaan sa kala for this year, 
and now I, I think they're asking for 28 billion. So how yeah, can we still fund uh, that, uh, that, that project, you know, yung NTFL cap? So they will have to explain yung uh, spending nila this year, paano ginastos, saan ginastos, tama ba yung paggastos? And if, can, if they cannot justify, then I don't think majority of the senators will still uh, have the conscience to uh, to grant uh, yung kanilang uh, proposed budget for 2022. Mm -hmm. as, as SP Soto, I would like to go to you quickly, sir, about DOH naman tayo. Sir, uh, yesterday sa House hearing, it was found that there is apparently no budget for the SRA. Anong masasabi natin dito? There is no budget for the mm -hmm. SRA? In the SRA. Ang sabi ni... Uh, Ni Secretary Duque, it's in the Bayanihan 3. But the problem with that is Bayanihan 3 is, well, we're, we're unsure if it will be signed into law. Um, Bayanihan 3 is not even with the Senate. We have our own version. We have the Bayanihan to Hill as one act proposal. But the Bayanihan 3 of the House, um, I'm not sure if it's transmitted to us already. Um, so, I don't know what uh, Secretary Duque means by that. Uh, um, the, the big question would be, wouldn't it be better if it's already included in the NEP or the GAB, I should say, uh, in, their, uh, in the House of Representatives uh, version, mm -hmm. or they want it in a different, uh, in a different uh, legislation? Mm. Uh, Will the Senate uh, push for the inclusion of SRA and other benefits for healthcare workers dito sa 2022 budget? In Bayanihan too, we placed it there. Mm -hmm. Nandun dun eh. Um, maaring uh, it was uh, not really comp uh, left inside during the Bayanihan 1, Bayanihan 1 but definitely sa Bayanihan 2, nandun dun dun eh. No speaking and of Neil, ah, Krisha, sorry. Again, there are issues hounding the implementation of the SRA, you know. May nakita kami mga 714 million and another 200 million na hindi tayo yung pag, tama yung pag-spend. And maraming nagre-reklamo because hindi umabot sa kanila. So, if they're asking for uh, another set of uh, funding under Bayanihan 3, well, sa akin lang ito, ah, I don't think uh, I can see logic in uh, appropriating a separate budget for SRA. Anyway, we can always include that under the uh, General mm -hmm. Appropriations Act in 2022. Bakit pa natin? Precisely. Mm -hmm. Now, the SRA was one of the topics that were um, tackled in the Senate Blue Ribbon investigation. And speaking of that investigation, um, we have President uh, Rodrigo Duterte calling out senators saying or calling on the public not to vote for senators who are showing off. Um, for um, SP Soto, I just want to ask, as the leader of that institution that seems to be earning the ire of President Duterte, what's your take on, on that, yung mga rants ni President Duterte, especially now that the Senate's in the middle of an investigation, mm -hmm. a very important investigation? Offhand, I know. Um, this is just my personal opinion. Often, I think uh, the president is misinformed. Mm -hmm. if, he, he, if, if he has a clearer picture, if he has the whole picture, I think it would be different. His attitude would be different on uh, these matters. Why, uh, mm -hmm. why do you think, sir, he's, he's misinformed? Bakit hindi siya um, Well, your guess is as good as mine. Well, the other day, uh, yeah, just yesterday, Senator Bongo was telling us, you know, the... the the close proximity of Senator Bongo with the president. No? He was telling us that the president uh, monitors YouTube mm -hmm. and watches uh, news programs. Uh, eh, baka nakakatalisod ng mga fake news to sa YouTube, eh. <laughs> Di ba? Uh, baka iba yung mga dating sa kanya or baka iba yung mga report sa kanya. I'd like to think it that way. Instead of saying na talagang parang ano, intimidating at saka talagang uh, completely against what the Senate is doing. I don't, I, I hope not. 
Mm-hmm. Now, for Senator Laxon, you were, um, for lack of a better term, a special mention in one of uh, President Duterte's addresses. Um, what do you take of? Uh, what do you make of that? You know, him resorting to personal attacks just because the Senate is probing itong utilization ng pandemic funds. Na medyo may natatalisod na, for example, um, Secretary Duque. Um, what do you make of of that? Po? Well, let's make uh, this clear. Now we're not showing off. Maybe some senators are more active than the others. Maybe some senators have more materials than the others. Maybe some senators are or have studied the issues better than the other. So walang siya off dito. I, ako, I've always been consistent in scrutinizing uh, year in, year out, yung ating national budget. And this is no exception because this is government spending. Kami yung nag-appropriate. Congress lagi yung nagpapasa ng uh, budget measure. And it is incumbent upon us to exercise oversight. Kasi kung walang titingin, edi pasa-pasa na lang. Now, we heard Secretary Roque, sinabi niya, basta nakadeliver, okay na. Well, price matters, ano? especially at the time na ang binibili natin ay mga medical uh, supplies uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So, wag mo sabihin sa akin na hindi nagmamatter yung presyo. Kung grossly overpriced, then, well, there's something wrong with uh, that opinion, uh, to say the least. May, may I add no, the, uh, my take on the matter? Um, for example, yung, when the executive department uh, complains you know, or reacts that way, the way uh, the Secretary Duque started with, his, uh, with answering the, the way, the, especially in the media, you know, I have a simple uh, paraphrase or quote. Explain before you complain. Mm-hmm. Eh, nauna yung complain eh. They're already complaining why, we're in the, why the Blue Ribbon is uh, saying this or why these members of the Senate are asking this or uh, what. Instead of complaining on about na sila binawasak or anything to that effect, explain. Explain mo muna. Tsaka mo sabihin. Oh, de, pag na-explain mo mabuti, nasabi mo yung na, uh, kung bakit nagkakaganon. Tsaka kapag complain, eh, pinaginitan nyo kami. Tama naman ang ginagawa namin. Eh, hindi eh. Di ba? Baligtad eh. Nagko-complain muna eh. Tapos yung explanation, uh, ang word na naririnig ko sa mga kasama ko sa hearing, evasive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, the Blue Ribbon Committee has conducted uh, three hearings na po and it will resume um, uh, on September 7. So far, ano yung prominent findings na nakita nyo dun sa tatlong hearings po na yun? Uh, maybe Senator Lacson would like to start. Yes. Maliwanag, napakalaki ng... Uh... Uh, skandalo or anomaly doon sa pag-transfer ng 42 billion pesos from DOH to DB, PSDBM. That's first. Ano? Now, second, uh, yung demand or procurement na ginawa ng PSDBM, inamin naman ni uh, Attorney Lau na hindi siya nag-exercise ng due diligence. Kasi as early as March 2017, bisita na nga sa Malacanang, inescorta na nga ni Michael Yang, who is another controversial personality, yung officials ng uh, Parmali. No? And then, kung may due diligence, nalaman sana nila na maraming kaso sa Taiwan dahil sa stock manipulation, yung officials ng Parmali, no? yung counterpart sa Taiwan. And then, another uh, ano, anomaly, yung address, you know, yung asaan namin, yung security unit namin sa Senate, nung nag-serve sila ng subpina, they were informed by the guard do sa building na 2018 pa wala na doon yung mga na, na dapat nakatira doon and yung formally was incorporated in uh, September of uh, 2019 in the, hindi ba and then 6 months later nabagdagan nila yung uh, billion 8.68 billion to be exact ano na kontrata sa PSDBM hindi ba katakot-takot na red flag yon so sa susunod na hearing, hindi lang tayo makukunta, although we'll focus on the uh, PSDBM uh, procurement uh, uh, method na ginawa nila. So yon uh, At marami pang issue kasi marami pa rin pumapasok na information. Alam mo, yung mga kababayan natin, sawa na rin eh. Pagod na pagod na rin sila na yung perang ginagasta galing sa buwis nila at galing sa utang, uh, wars, ano, galing pa sa utang, eh winawaldas. So maraming nagre-report talaga sa amin. For example, ito, uh, I'm sorry for uh, with your indulgence, ano. We've talked to several uh, LGU officials, ano. 
I won't mention where. Yung, alam nyo yung Health Facilities Enhancement Program, HFEP, pinunduhan namin ito ng malaki para makakumply kami sa universal healthcare law. So what we found out, ito lang, isang item, ambulansya with equipment. Alam nyo doon na yung bili ng uh, DOH, yung kanilang procurement, ang isang ambulansya na merong uh, equipment sa loob, 2.5 million pesos each. Uh -huh. Yung LGU, para talagang for comparison, maging apples to apples, bumili ni sila ng eksaktong ban para gawing ambulansya, bumili ni sila ng eksaktong equipment. Alam nyo yung pagkabili nila? 1.5 million. Hindi uh -huh. ba nakahagalit yung isang ambulansya may overpress kagad na 1 million pesos? So in other words, lima na dapat ang nabili do sa tatlo. If you will uh, uh, compute it uh, uh, exactly ano, or accurately. Imagine yung wastage ng pera dito na ang patong kagad sa isang ambulansya na may gamit sa loob, 1 million pesos. Now, how many units of ambulance ang na-procure ng DBM under the HPEP? Ako masama loob ko rito because sa 2021, Ako yung nag-realign ng 8.68 billion pesos papunta sa HPEP. That's on top of the 2020 insertion that I made or realignment that I made na 1 billion. Pagkatapos, malalaman ko from uh, some LGUs na ganyang ka-anomalya yung pag-procure ng, uh, ng mga equipment para sa HPEP. That's on top of the deficiencies noted in the uh, maintenance, ano, in the procurement of the uh, HPEP at saka yung, uh, yung deficiency rin sa infrastructure. Naipresent na namin ito during the last, uh, last hearing. Uh -huh. Sir, DBM... Bottom line, bottom line, COA is correct. Uh -huh. mm. There is non-compliance with pertinent laws, uh -huh. rules, and regulations. Uh -huh. Now, I would like to ask you, SP Soto and you, Senator Lacson, um, granted that the Senate is conducting its investigation on this, Senator Lacson mentioned about the overpriced ambulance. But let's talk frankly here, Senators. How realistic yung someone will be held accountable on this? Because um, President Duterte has been very vocal about uh, his support of Health Secretary Duque, even at one point saying that he will not accept if he will resign. Granted that Secretary Duque has said that he's willing to resign, uh, he's, he's going to resign after all the COA uh, issues have been settled and President Duterte will accept his resignation and so on. But there is support. The, the fact of the matter is President Duterte supports Health Secretary Duque. So how realistic is okay. your accountability? Just go, back. Just go back to the record of the Senate. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, talk about two, two, uh, two uh, events. You remember the Bureau of Immigration uh, uh, investigation? Oh, and the Bindu Salagayan? Uh, the committee report of uh, that investigation was um, uh, taken up by the Ombudsman, was by use by the Ombudsman. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, there was a condition no, na may mga nakasuhan. Itong uh, uh, also the field health which was conducted by the Committee of the Whole. You know, we tanggal lahat yung mga official and may mga kaso lahat. You know? So, um, what do we expect from here? Anong realistic dito? Eh, siguradong the Committee Report of the Blue Ribbon will be submitted to the Ombudsman. You know? Ang importante sa mga Committee Report namin, hindi katulad ng mga Committee Report ng araw na iba, dinadala namin sa floor. Ang committee report ng Senate, whether Blue Ribbon or whatever committee, if you come up with a report and it does not reach the plenary and it is not approved in plenary, it is, it is a draft committee report of that committee. It is not a Senate report. A Senate report is one that is uh, approved in plenary. And we have done that many times. At lahat yan, ginagamit ng Ombudsman. As far as I know, Marami ng mga kasong pinayal ng ombudsman galing doon sa mga Senate investigation. So that's uh, where it, uh, it will go. Mm -hmm. So uh, just putting, out, putting it on the record, sirs, the Senate will push for some sort of accountability if proven that there is indeed corruption in this um, spending. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, that will be the, uh, uh, the trajectory of the committee report.
Mm-hmm. Mabalik lang ako dito, sir, on the, on the Blue Ribbon Committee hearings. Uh, Senator Bongo has said that uh, the inquiries uh, done by the Senate should not lead to bullying. Is this the case? Uh, <laughs> it depends on what you mean by bullying. Uh, well, perhaps that is opinion. Eh? I know some of us, uh, I have been through worse. Huh? I have been there since 9th Congress, 10th Congress. Ay, matindi mabulyo sila, Senator Maceda, sila, <laughs> sila Senator Gonzalez. Iba yun. Uh, mild nga yun ngayon eh. Mild eh. Um, yeah, so really, it depends on your perspective. So, so sir, siguro, you said that. Go ahead, Senator Ping. Yeah, siguro instead of bullying, Merong mga senador na mas passionate, no? siguro sa hirap na dinanas nila sa pagkakukulate ng mga materials, pagkatapos harap-harapan, lolokohin ka, evasive, magsisunungaling. So yung iba, siyempre, nadadala na rin yung uh, kanilang, uh, yung, yung bugso ng damdamin nila dahil kung harap-harapan, niloloko ka, hindi ba magre-react ka mas kito paano? So tama si Senate President, ano? it depends on how you define bullying or how you describe bullying. Kung uh, out of passion, medyo tumaas yung boses, kasi, kasi nga, uh, harap-harapan yung lokohan, I don't think that's bullying. Nak- nakakainis kasi, no? ganito ang, ang nakikita ko through the years. Eh. Ang nakakainis, ano, yung, uh, yung kausap mo, akala naluloko, naluloko ka niya. Doon ang gagalit yun eh. You know, <laughs> inco- incompetent people think, they cannot, if, if incompetent people cannot recognize incompetence, they also cannot recognize wisdom. Mm-hmm. Ang problema, akala nila, pareho nilang mag-isip yung kausap nila. Uh, magpalusot ka lang, lulusot ka. Hindi ganun eh. Uh, evasive is a very soft word to use. Mm-hmm. So, um, another topic, sir, on Senator Bongo, just very quickly. The, the possibility of um, filing uh, so before the Senate Ethics Committee was raised. Para tingnan yung, pos- yung uh, links ni Senator Bongo with uh, Christopher Lau. So, uh, Senator Gordon said that uh, there is support from some senators. Would you know anything about this? Um, well, I'll, I'll answer for that because Senator Larson is the Vice Chairman of the Committee on Ethics, so it will be unethical for him to, to comment. Uh, the Committee on Ethics of the Senate is only activated when there is a complaint. Mm-hmm. So yung mga naririnig natin na possibility, na ganito, na si ganyan, eh, pwedeng mana, wala, sa ngayon wala yun. Because no one has filed a complaint. Mm-hmm. So pag merong nag-file ng complaint, uh, that's the time that we will uh, discuss it. And the Chair of the Committee on Ethics is sent on Mani Neil, I, I think support is a wrong choice of word. Mm-hmm. I'd rather call it duty. No? Kasi mm-hmm. may Senate Ethics Committee, kung miyembro ka ng committee, it is your duty mm-hmm. to act on whatever complaint is lodged before the committee, especially the chairman. And I think Senator Pacquiao has already spoken, being the chairman of the Ethics Committee, na pag dumating yung complaint, he has to act on it. Kasi magiging remiss naman kami sa aming uh, duty kung hindi aaksyonan yung uh, complaint. Nangyari na ito in the past. Mm-hmm. So, hindi siguro support, maybe mm-hmm. uh, yun lang ang nagamit na salita, pero hindi support ang tawag yun. That's a call mm-hmm. of duty. Mm-hmm. Just a quick follow-up for SP, since bawal itong sagutin probably ni Senator Laxon. Do you think it's essential for a complaint bawal. to be filed, uh, for a complaint to be filed, uh, SP Soto? Para to, will it give some... Uh, clarity, kumbaga, doon sa pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, if a uh, complaint will be filed before the Ethics Committee? Well, it works. It cuts both ways. But let me clear that first. No, hindi naman bawal kay Senator Lasson as Vice Chairman. I'm just yeah. saying that uh, parang pagka kami mga uh, impeachment judges kami, pagka merong ini-impeach, hinihinga kami ng opinion, sinasabi ko agad na hindi, dahil kasi magiging judge kami, mga kailangan impartial kami. No, pero dito sa sinasabi mo, um, pagka, pagka may nag-file ng complaint, ano, automatically, iti-take up na, uh, uh, just like uh, Senator Laxon said. 
Sirs, balikan ko lang quickly yung drants ni President Duterte. Ano? Kasi nga na special mention doon si Senator Laxon. What can you make of the President making comments about the physique of April? I mean, specifically uh, Senator uh, Gordon and you, Senator Laxon, uh, medyo parang hindi na about your line of work yung naging comment ni President Duterte eh, about your hairdo, about Senator Gordon's weight, the physical appearance. What can you make of a President making those kinds of remarks? Neil, insult is the weakest form of defense. Ano? If it is uh, a defense at, at all, ano? if you may call that a, a defense, yun lang masasabi ko. Kung wala ka na may depensya, mag-insulto ka na lang. <laughs> do you think, sir, ano, do you think it's a coincidence that the people whose names are floating around as possible candidates in next year's elections are the ones being singled out by this rant? I would not want to think it, to think along that line. Uh, basta yun lang masasabi ko. Pag uh, ang sagot mo, insulto, wala ka may depensya. Uh-huh. Ang, mabigat, ang mabigat naman sa mga ganyan kasi pag uh, yung sagot nakakatuwa, mas kuya lang yung sagot. Eh, kaya lang, pareho nung ano, I, I, I just read this from uh, Cito Beltran. Maganda yung sagot ni Cito Beltran because Cito Beltran is the son of Louis Beltran. And Louis Beltran had a problem before with Corey calling him fat. Di ba? Uh, dahil nagalit sa kanya, dahil meron sinulat siya about hiding under the bed and all that. Ang sabi ni Sito Bertan, kung sa kanya raw sasabihin yun, dapat uh, 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 calling you fat. Sasabihin daw niya, uh, the next time you call me fat, I'll eat you for breakfast. <laughs> um, go ahead, Christian. Alright, so speaking of the elections, the Laxon and Soto tandem will be launching on September 8. Tama po ba? Yun pa rin po ang date. Can you walk us through kung paano ang mangyayari sa September 8 po? Pardon, <laughs> ikaw mula. Yeah. Mabuti na tanong mo, Cristiano, kasi magpa-plug na kami. <laughs> September 8, uh, tape a slide yung ginawa namin. So, pwede mapanood dito sa mga TV stations. No? Cable uh, TV stations, sa local, and then ipi-play ito simultaneously uh, sa mga TV stations uh, na national. So, hindi ito yung uh, parang gagawin ng PDP, PDP laban na uh, physically they'll be there. No, nagawa na namin ito. And uh, it is very interesting to watch. Uh, yun lang masasabi ko. So, kindly watch on September 8, 11 o'clock hanggang 11.30. Yan ang plugging. Are you watching America's Got Talent? Or yes, Pilipinas sir. Got Talent? <laughs> During the pandemic? Oh, ganun, uh-huh. More or less, ganun makikita ninyo. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sinong mga personalities po, Senators, yung, mm-hmm. yung kasama dun sa launch niyo? Ay, ah, surprise na yun. Panawin nyo na lang, niya. isang linggo na lang eh. <laughs> Wala ka no? Walang look, sir. As a like possible senatorial lineup. Wala pa? Uh, w- wala pa, wala pa. Speaking of the senatorial lineup, may updates po ba tayo dito? Nabawasan po, nadagdagan? Ano pong update dun sa slate nyo? And sino po yung talagang included sa Laxon and Soto um, tandem senatorial slate? Meron pa kasing, ano eh, meron pa kasing undecided. Ano? Uh, so if uh, my partner doesn't mind, uh, uh, mauna lang akong sumagot. Uh, meron mga undecided eh. Pero let me put it this way. Itong mga lineup namin, ito yung mga gusto naming maging senador mm-hmm. or gusto naming ma-re-elect na senador. Sapagkat alam namin kung sino ang magagaling na, na senador at sino ang pwedeng maging magaling sa senador. Sa tagal namin doon, veterano kami roon eh. Ako nga ay Jurassic senator eh. Kaya alam ko kung sino yung dapat na mahalal at hindi. Ano? So itong mga pangalan na binibigay namin, sila yung mga ini-endorse namin na gusto namin maging senador. Ano, yun yung, kaya yun yung lineup na sinasabi namin. Ngayon, meron mga ilan doon na hindi pa sigurado kung ano gusto nila takbuhan. Pero kung oh, makakaisip sila doon, oh, gusto namin na sila tumakbo at maging senador. Ngayon, um, uh, meron din naman doon na as a matter of fact, karamihan, gusto talaga kami mag-endorse or kami ang kasama sa lineup. Meron talaga mga ganon. So yan na nga yung sila uh, Senator Chis Escudero. Senator Loren Legarda, Senator Gringo Honasan, um, si Senator uh, Big Subiri, uh-huh. ano, si Joel Villanueva, uh-huh. si JB Ejercito, uh-huh. si Jojo Binay, and then um, 
we're looking at uh, the possibility of them running like uh, si Senator Gordon, Senator Gatchalian, um, Lucy Torres Gomez, and um, probably Attorney Goyo Larasabag, former Comelec Commissioner. Diba? And then, uh, so, medyo kung tutuusin, mga seven or eight yung madiin doon talaga, di ba? Pero, uh, as far as we know, they will decide soon. So, when mm -hmm. they decide soon, perhaps we will be able to um, come up with the 12 that we would want to endorse as senators. Mm -hmm. So, sir, clarify ko lang. Because you mentioned that these are these the, the possible senatorial candidates that you want to endorse. This is regardless of, of line, sir. Kasi... Some have questioned na bakit uh, kasama sa line-up si Ganito, eh kasama din siya sa line-up ng administration, if you will call it that way. It has happened before. Uh, hmm. Meron naman talaga line-up na gustong i-endorse nung, oh, nung ibang partido. Eh. Meron naman ganun eh. At tinahayaan naman talaga yun. Hindi pinagbabawalan yun. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last uh, 2016 elections, Senator Lacson was endorsed by two. Uh, to other political groups. Ako din naman, ganun din, mga dalawa rin. Hindi, hindi naman masama yun. It's good for the candidate. Sapagkat meron grupong, dalawa o tatlong grupo yung nagdadala sa kanya, mas magusto ng mga kandidato yun. Kesa sa stick to one siya, na hindi siya dadali ng kabila. Di ba? Medyo, ano yun, uh, hindi masyado. Ano mo naman, politics is addition. Especially mm -hmm. when it comes to election. Mm -hmm. Senator Ping, now I would like to ask you, let's talk about uh, VP Robredo because recently nga ito, naga, we found out that you had a talk with her. She also confirmed the, the meeting. Is this still open? Uh, are you still open for discussion? Despite na granted that you said na, na may nag-decline na ng talks about it, but are you still open to discuss it? Yeah, before we go to the topic, ano, uh, gusto ko lang dagdagan na we might have one or two surprise senatorial uh, candidates under our lineup. I've talked to them and uh, they're seriously considering. These are surprise candidates. I cannot reveal their names yet, but I have <laughs> already requested uh, new faces. No? I have new already faces. requested Senator or Senate President Soto to reserve uh, one or two slots uh, for reforma. Uh, saka na lang yon, Suspense na lang yon. Now Why? going to the topic of okay, uh, VP Robredo. <laughs> uh, I'd rather not talk about it anymore kasi much has been said about that meeting and uh, ako, sinabi ko lang noon uh, I proposed a winning formula for unification mm -hmm. and then after that, she gave the details ano? and I don't want to delve on uh, possible uh, motives kung bakit uh, yung buong detalye na, na, i, uh, na i, uh, uh, sabi sa publiko uh, so let's leave it at that. Now, uh, yung possibility na open pa yon at this point in time, sabi ko nga nung una, nabasa na yung sakong namin. Ngayon hanggang leeg na eh. Alam mo yung kumunoy? Habang nagbibigil ka, lumulubog ka eh. Ganun na situation namin ni Senate President Soto. No, wala na kaming iwanan, wala na kaming atrasan, especially na maglo-launch na kami on September 8. And uh, we are determined to file our uh, certificates of candidacy Meron na rin kami, nai-consultan na, na rin ni Espita sa, sa Pungsoy kung anong oras, kung anong araw kami magpapile. So I don't think it still, you know, uh, it, it still makes sense na atras pa kami. So let's put it that way. Kami, tuloy-tuloy na, uh, lumubog na kami hanggang laeg, sumisid na kami, <laughs> lumubog na pati ulo, so tuloy-tuloy na kami, wala nang atrasan ito. Mm -hmm. So frankly speaking, sir, because much has been said about having a united front, if we can call it that way, against the administration. So, is that no longer realistic, would you say? Well, we, we tried. Ano? Ako, sincere naman yung inoffer ko sa kanya. But mukhang hindi mag-work. Kasi nga, dinikla niya. So, I just want to put it behind me or behind us. And let's leave it at that. Ano? kanya kanyang uh, pananaw, kanya kanyang paniniwala yung tao. Uh, and uh, manatili na lang na yung respect namin sa isa't isa. Uh, the way we will run our campaign, no? uh, when it comes to that, napag-usapan na namin ni Senate President to, we'll stick to issues. You know? Wala na yung uh, the usual uh, batuhan kasi nakaka-distract at saka nagiging entertainment. And kami, we will run on, uh, uh, we'll run a campaign uh, on issues. 
not uh, not on uh, entertainment. So, ganun. As we progress, ganun lang laging gagawin namin. No? Kasi meron kaming uh, nag-aaral kami, patuloy kami nag-aaral, nahanda namin yung kan- kanilang ang aming roadmap, yung aming uh, uh, yung master plan or yung uh, platform of govern- government. Doon kami naka-stick. And uh, we will uh, just rely on our kakayahan, katapangan, katapatan. Yung competence namin, yung ability, yung courage namin, yung aming uh, pinagdaanan uh, between us, more than 80 years of experience in public service. 83 years to be exact. And hindi na matatawaran siguro yun. The, the ideal situation that uh, some, of, uh, some would like ano, is only possible in a two-party system. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the, the, the uh, well, that's the, the talking realistically. Ano, eh, sa ngayon nga, kasi maraming ibang partido, maraming ano, ang hirap talaga mag-unify. Ano, pero kung two-party system tayo, katulad nung araw, at katulad sa Amerika, eh, pwede yun. Pwede yung united yung, uh, against, yung opposition at saka yung administration. Ganun eh. Sa sitwasyon ngayon, uh, mahirap, mahirap. Lalo na kung Ganun nga, yung mga kausap ni Senator Lacson, eh, medyo iba ang takbo ng thinking. Okay. Unity, pero uh, sila. Ganun eh. Uh, mahirap pag gagano. Mm-hmm. Sir, I just wanna go, opa, sir, I just wanna go back dun sa surprise candidates nyo. What can you tell us about them? Are they newcomers in politics or in the Senate lang po? Newcomers in politics. In politics. Ano, sir, can you... Can you <laughs> in what way, sir? In what way are they surprising candidates? Are, there's, are they considered a surprise candidate? Surprise candidates kasi magugulat kayo kung sino pala yun. If it materializes. But nag, uh, meron kami yung preliminary na pag-uusap mm-hmm. and ako mismo nagulat din na uh, yun. Uh, he also wants to throw his hat in the uh, political arena. So, unlikely, no? Unlikely. That's all I can say. Pero he is winnable. Mm-hmm. Winnable, sir. Kasama sa mga surveys, sir? Or <laughs> sa mga... Pre- hindi, hindi. Hindi nasama kasi hindi lumalabas yung pangalan niya. Kasi surprise uh, niya daw, surprise. Kaya nga surprise, <laughs> eh. <laughs> okay. Um, now, uh, senators, just quickly, um, how about, let's talk about the, the uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Mayor Sara Duterte. Do you, what what's your... It's, it's going to be her decision at the end of the day. But do you really think that she's going to run for presidency? Well, ako, I don't want to talk about other candidates. I only want to talk about uh, Sen- Senate President Soto and Senator Lacson. Kasi kami lang yung buong tandem eh. Sila nagkakagulo pa eh. So, uh, in that regard, medyo sa tigit ko, may advantage kami kasi sila namimili pa, nag-aaway pa nga kung sino yung magkakatandem. So, kami, matagal na kaming cast in stone. Ano? The moment we decided, Okay, uh, that's it. Let's do this. Uh, the moment we uh, made that decision, yun na yun. It practically shows our decisiveness. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, that's very important as far as leaders are concerned. Uh, and so, the tama si Senator Lacson, uh, si partner, because hindi magandang pag-usapan namin yung sitwasyon or yung opinion namin sa ibang mga kandidato. As a matter of fact, uh, that uh, question is always uh, thrown at me, especially if it's, uh, if it, uh, no, when it comes to the, the uh, president, because uh, he has expressed uh, his uh, intention to run, as, to run as vice president. So, tinatanong nila kami. Eh, tinatanong ako <laughs> kung ano masasabi ko. Sabi ko, eh, kaibigan ko yun, pero I, I'm, I'm focused on my result. I'm focused on what my programs and my uh, uh, our team's uh, uh, Lakson Soto program is. Uh, we don't really look at the left and the right. Ano? Nakatapao ko kami. Kung baga sa, kung baga sa kabayo, nakatapao ko kami. Uh, we'd rather stick to the issues. We'd rather to present to the people what we can offer and for them to choose. Ganun yung sitwasyon namin. Eh, mm-hmm. Kaya sabi nga ni Senator Lakson, subuhin na kami. Duma, duma, may dahil pa siya ng, ayaw ko, gusto niyang ulitin yung Sabi naman ni Senate President, masisi satanas pa makalaban, tuloy-tuloy na rin. <laughs> <laughs> so, to wrap up this interview, sir, 
just very briefly, a uh, question for both of you. We're only a few days away from your launch. Uh, we're only a month away from the filing of candidacy. SP Soto, Senator Lacson, the question now is, what can Filipinos expect from a leadership from you? Ah, Just very, that, very that. briefly, sir. Very yes. briefly. Ito lang. Ito, telling, ano, magandang question. We will reinvent the bu bureaucracy. Okay. It will not be more of the same. Your mentality na more of the same, wala yung defeatist yun eh. So we need to reinvent. No? And we need to uh, innovate. No? Yun lang masasabi ko. Kasi we've run this government for so long na yung more of the same mentality, uh, administration after administration, yun na lang ng yun eh. So marami kaming uh, sa aming platform, marami kaming i-introduce na talagang bago. Itry natin yung bago na subok na, na hindi pa nasusubukan ng, uh, ng gobyerno. Ako, ang, ang focus ko talaga, ano eh, I-adapt natin yung uh, mga mga practices, good practices ng big big corporations. No? Yung ibang bansa, sinusunod nila yun eh. Sa budget lang, for example, no? ang sa atin, budget ceiling. So nagkukumahog yung mga agencies, hindi lamang nila para abutin yung budget ceiling na binibigay sa kanila. Gusto pa nila, lampasan ng konti para pag tumabad, sa pool pa rin. Now, in big corporations, zero-based, mag-depend ka ng budget mo from zero. Kung meron ka mga proyekto na hindi natapos sa uh, previous year, i-present mo based on zero budget. So, nang ganun, yung vetting will be more thorough and your scrutiny will be more uh, uh, realistic, ano? manggagaling mismo sa inyo. That's one innovation. I don't want to delve on the details on the other innovations that we are introducing. That's the main uh, program of uh, Senator Lacson and Lacson Soto dahil uh, budget reform and uh, balanced budget you know that is, that, that definitely goes to the people yun ang ano eh yun ang importante and then uh, to answer completely your your question panoodin mo sa September 8 kasi we capsulized uh, what we wanted to do and ano doon eh we're building it on we're building it on uh, a good government that can be trusted by the people Okay, thank you so much again. That is Senate President Tito Soto and Senator Ping Lacson joining us in this episode. My name is Neil Arun Mercado. Joining me is Christian Ramos. And that has been your Inside Look. Everyone, keep safe. Thank you. Keep safe. Thank you. Thank you.